What is up, guys? Anthony Bui Tran here, your host of the Elite Seller Summit. Today, we have AMZ Scout with us, right? If you guys have never heard of AMZ Scout, they're one of the largest, like, growing, fastest Chrome extensions that is out there that just makes your life a lot easier when it comes to just, like, product research and just gathering the right data from Amazon, right? And from AMZ Scout, today, we have Valentina and Alexis. Valentina is the CEO of AMZ Scout and along the way she found Alexis and Alexis is they're both here to really kind of help us figure out one thing today and that topic is how do we find products on Amazon that are unique right how do we discover that niche that is going to be profitable for us right I think a lot of times as Amazon sellers we're always like all right we're like scouring the you know Amazon.com trying to look for product ideas but we keep finding these like generic items or we can't figure out how to make it more unique Right, and so today we have Alexis and Valentina here to help us. But before we get started, do you guys want to say a couple things about yourselves? Give a quick intro about who you guys are, how long you guys been with the company, and little things like that. Okay, hi everyone. I'm Valentina. I'm from Russia. I have been in the company for three years now. I am a COO, to be correct, because as I've heard, you said CEO. <laughs> Uh-huh. And I'm a mother. <laughs> Anything uh-huh. else? <laughs> okay. I can tell you what I've learned. And then, so you've been in the company for three years, right? Uh, for AMG Scout? Okay, yeah. cool. We'll hop over to back to you. Alexis, you want to go ahead and give yourself an intro? Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm Alexis. Um, I'm from right outside of the Philadelphia area. Um, I've been with the company for a little over a year. And I've primarily worked with events pretty much the last year, but I've also done everything from partner management to strategic planning. And I've also worked as a VA for Amazon sellers. Okay, got it. So with that background knowledge and now this side of the knowledge, like it comes all together, right? Yeah. So, you know, to like help our viewers out there that are watching this video, you know, like, you know, a lot of us are like just stuck on like, what's going to be the next big product idea, right? Or what niche am I going to go into? What have you guys kind of like discovered a longer way with like all the data that you guys see and earn. Do you have any tips uh, for anyone watching? I really want to start with a small introduction, which is not really about the unique products, but about the approach, which will like reflect all the experience and skills we got from our users because we very often communicate with them. We have interviews that are called customer development interviews. We're trying to find out uh, what difficulties people have on their road, on their way to becoming Amazon sellers. So here are my tips. First one, this business is uh, counterintuitive, right? No one should rely on the intuition in this business as people usually do in the communication uh, in in any other uh, spheres of life. What I mean by that is if you like some product, like a slipstick I have on my table, it doesn't mean that anyone else will like it, right? That works with your relationship. For example, you pick up a guy or a girl, you're the only one you like (laughs) this person and that's enough, right? You're gonna marry them or you like this food and you're gonna have it today. So your intuition is enough, have it. If you like the product, it doesn't guarantee that anyone else in the world is going to like it. So you you need to rely on data. And it's really so much easier to do on Amazon because, well, back in times, when there were no product research tools, the methods were pretty straight, right? You wanted to sell, I don't know, bread, for example, in your district. And the only thing you could do is to go around wondering if there's enough bakeries or, you know, other shops with bread. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, yeah, the district needs another one. Right now in the online business in e-commerce, You kind of can predict this stuff, but on Amazon, it's really so much easier because Amazon kind of give this data that can help you to predict sales, competition, some other stuff like keywords, right? So that's where MD Scout comes in, but you asked us to be less salesy. (laughs) Uh So I'll go on, but we'll get back to that. The second thing is really like interesting. You can't really fake anything with your own business. What I mean by that is that when you work for a company, a big one or even a small one, you sometimes can get lazy 
you can sometimes fake the activity, fake the productivity, and uh, you just slide through with it. No one will notice, and it does not reflect on the company's revenue all the time. I mean, you can just get relaxed on Friday and it's okay. In your own business, you can't really fake anything. You can't fake photos or a good listing, good texts, keywords, or sales, most importantly. So if you don't do anything, if you're being lazy, if you don't, if you go to sleep or on holiday, nothing will happen for you, right? Unless you have assistants, but if you have ones, you need to manage them. <laughs> so that's work again. And my last point, probably for the introduction, is that the main thing is uh, not knowing what to do when you start a business, because that's the YouTube video software or courses, right? or some software, but to know what kind of things you're gonna do and what your audience, what your future audience, uh, future clients want. And the first one about the product. Well, again, back to, uh, I'll, I'll use a hairbrush as my example, okay? Mm -hmm. So you have an idea for a new hairbrush. You write a lot of reviews as you guys recommend in the YouTube videos, you know, a lot, read people's reviews, decide how to, to differentiate and stuff. So you think you have, you have a great, great idea and now you need to check it. And some people go to their friends and family and ask if they're going to like this idea. But that's not the approach we recommend. Actually, as we use this method, it's called customer development, we recommend it for the product development too. Uh, and the Good advice here, I think, is to read this book that's called Mom Test by Rob Fitzpatrick. So he basically advises to go to your to people, you know, probably friends, family, and ask them other kind of stuff. Do not present the idea like, would you buy this hairbrush I created or I imagined? Because they would say, yes, I would. You're a genius, right? <laughs> they will lie to you. You need to ask them if they even use this kind of object because maybe they, they don't. You need to ask them if they're okay with it, if they like it. And is there anything they don't like about this thing? Are there any difficulties they're facing using this thing? How they overcome these difficulties right now? Do they pay for them? That's a good approach, which I really like. And that's the approach we follow, by the way, creating the features and the tools because mm -hmm. we really don't want to imagine things. And this, the second component in this tip is to know your future audience, to understand exactly what kind of people are gonna buy your product. Because even products like mineral water, for example, mm -hmm. are not used by everyone. I don't drink water, for example. I like fizzy drinks, so I'm not a customer in this way. For niche products, products from narrow niches, this is the case. You're going to have a very narrow niche and very narrow future customers, future audience, which you should keep in mind when creating texts, photos, and everything. You should think about them, not only about the keywords. That's it, I think. Uh, Alexis wanted to add something about this kind of income stream being passive, Alexis. Yeah, well, I think that the biggest, uh, and I, this goes into the best practices, the biggest mistake, I think, that especially new sellers make is they're able to figure out the what even go on to YouTube videos and find out certain metrics or why they choose certain things. But what they tend to miss is the why behind it. And if you're missing the why you're missing a lot of the opportunity to improve in that, excuse me, specific area, whether it's like why we need reviews or why these reviews of a certain product that you're looking to create, why are they getting bad reviews or why are you seeing consistent reviews that are saying this and how to fix it? If we're missing the why, you miss a lot of opportunity to create a unique product and a niche in itself that you find that the most successful sellers tend to do. Yeah, so it's kind of a recap that from what I understand, you know, you guys were saying like in order to find that unique niche and product, you kind of figure out like who the customer is. Valentina, you were kind of saying like with the hairbrush or whatever, you kind of show it to someone and then after you show it to them, you ask them, you know, why do you use this or do you even use this? Um, and you kind of understand their customer persona a little bit more. Um, I think that's what you were getting at, Valentina. And then from there, um, you know, Alexis, you were saying like, what are the reviews on it? 
you know, what kind of things are the customers saying about the product. And like, instead of just like seeing like what they're saying, but ask them like, why, right? Why are they saying this? Is like the product, um, you know, like not being, you might have like one idea of how the product is being used, but the customer might be like using it in like a different way. So you guys have different whys, right? And it all comes down to balance, you know, what you're saying where it's like your branding and your messaging to the customer. You want to speak the language of the customer. And if those two aren't on sync, right, uh, then it can lead to those bad reviews and whatnot. Did I kind of summarize that correct? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I know for me personally, like the why is always something that I feel like I think about a little bit more than my team sometimes. Sometimes we're launching a product, but I'm like, guys, when we do like a copy or something, like what like emotions are we trying to invoke? Like who is our target audience and how do we possibly maybe like design the branding or similar to like who our target audience is, right? And I feel like that's something I'm still like working with, with my like virtual team. So I'm sure that's like something a lot of like new sellers have issues with. So in terms of like saying, um, you know, when it comes to packaging for like certain products, I think Pinterest is like a great way to really explore like maybe like your competitors and like what you're doing within your niche. And so, and that's usually like how like I get like inspiration and how like I kind of possibly stumble upon onto other uh, unique product ideas. But segueing it back to you guys, you know, so besides like, you know, really understanding like the customer, really understanding, you know, who the product is going to be made for. Is there, are there like any other like little tidbits that really like you guys or like possibly like the AMG Scout tool can really help with for consumers to you know, make a decision on like that area within product research? Yes, uh, we've done some strategies on how to actually find something unique and unsaturated. And uh, so we're going to start with, with that, uh, that one. And the first one would be, we have this feature that is called date first available. I can show it, but I, I really don't think I have to. Anyone can just open the pro extension uh, it has a free trial, full functioning. So people used to say that they are looking for niches that have a lot of new sellers in it because you can see the date when the product was launched for every product in the niche. And if the niche is new and booming, maybe it's it's a hype. There's a lot of new sellers and people used to think that it's a good strategy to, to join them. But... Soon they realized that such niches become really saturated very soon. So we, uh, I want to explain uh, what is the new strategy I've heard to, you know, to avoid this. And the strategy is to find the niches with probably boring products, but where there's a lot of old sellers, let's say 2014, 15, or even earlier, that kind of are feeling relaxed because they do not compete anymore. There's no new sellers joining them and they don't have any improving techniques like better photos, better keywords, like a keyword war, you know, <laughs> better texts and so on. They just feel comfortable because they are the best in the niche. And so you can join them without no one noticing that <laughs> you're becoming one of them. Okay, mm -hmm. Alexis? Yeah, when you become one of them, essentially it's surprising because you have someone who has come into a niche with a group of sellers who um, have a, essentially stayed dormant. They kind of done the same things. They're fine with their sales because they're still generating the amount of sales that they've always generated. So they haven't tried really anything new and they're comfortable. So when you have someone that's able to come in as a seller and have better photos, better bullets, and really speak to essentially the pain value vision of the product, you're really able to dominate in an area. And before really the other sellers kind of wake up and go, oh, wow, I'm, I'm losing sales to this person, then you've actually kind of established the market for yourself. And everybody then has to adjust to you. Got it. So you're saying like, I've actually never seen this within any of the other tools, but it sounds pretty nifty. So within AMG Scout, there's like a thing that tells you like when the item first starts selling, right? But you're saying instead of like, you know, hopping on a trend of like all these new sellers and emerging trends, sometimes maybe it might be easier to 
find um, listings that are like older and uh, and little like niches that are older and then just come in there and like really everybody and outdo everybody. Is that right? Yeah, pretty much. I think that biggest difference and I think what people kind of get wrong is this idea of what's unique. Like what is the definition of unique and why is it important in, in Amazon selling like circle or, or selling on Amazon? When you think of something unique, you think of something fun or exciting and you kind of tend to hop on things that are trending forward, like let's say a fidget spinner or things like that, because you're like, oh, this is new, this is unique. But it's not always a good idea because everybody kind of thinks that way. That's why we say it's also a good idea to kind of try to stay away from those hyped up trends and unique products and go for either the more unsaturated products can be boring, but they're still selling but they're boring, you know, that these things don't need to be fancy that you can work on quality, you can work on improving different aspects of it to make it unique in the field and improve the product as a whole. But you don't need to chase after what everybody else is considering unique. Got it. And then within like AMG style, I know that, you know, one of the features that I've never heard of with any other tool is like, like how old a listing is. Are there any other like little features within like AMG Scout that provide maybe like a different competitive edge compared to relative some of the other tools out there? Because I, I, I've i never actually used something like the last date feature. So I find that really interesting. And that could be very, very useful for me and my team. Yeah, okay. There are more. <laughs> One of them is uh, most recent ones. It's called the saturation score. Again, we talked to the customers and we've heard that people are really afraid that they'll get into the niche. And in the next few months, tens of other new sellers or old sellers will get into the niche too. And it will become saturated in a few months. You uh-huh. can't really predict that. So we can really predict that because mm-hmm. we're software and we see what people do. And that's our, you know, <laughs> strong point. Okay. Uh, so what we decided to do is to show other people, other users, that this niche was found by some other users. And we actually show this number in this month. I mean, for example, in July. And we actually show this number, for example, 68 other people, other users of AMZ Scout, not on Amazon itself, found this niche in July. And that's like a niche score six or seven, which is pretty high. And if you're the only one, it will be zero which is really good. Oh, one. Okay. It shows it compared to other AMZ Scout people that have viewed the same niche too? Yes. Huh. That's very interesting. Okay. That's very cool. And that was, you guys developed that because of just like feedback from your customers or was this something that, you know, someone envisioned within the company um, and you guys kind of just pushed out to share with everybody else? It was actually inspired by one of our partner. And then so he kind of inspired you guys. Okay, no, that's really cool. When it comes to development like that, like would you say um, things are kind of inspired from the top down and also from the customers too, I assume, right? Within the business? Yeah, I'd say, yeah, I'd say also from really the bottom down, if anything, I mean, we're, we talk to customers all the time. I'd say that's pretty much a pillar in the company. We constantly are talking to like real life sellers And we're using their real life problems and trying to come up with solutions. Like, for example, like, I know that with the saturation score that we've added, um, I mean, when whenever you're talking to sellers, especially beginners, their biggest fear is to get into a niche and not be able to compete. So a lot of the times they're kind of, you know, analysis paralysis with this idea that Oh, all of these other people must be finding this niche as well. So this gives them primarily the opportunity to kind of analyze it right away and see, do they want to take the risk? No one found it that month. They think this is a good opportunity, or maybe they found a lot of people that have found it, but maybe they want to take that bet that everybody kind of feels like, oh, well, everybody's finding this and is going to not take the opportunity um, to you know, start selling in that niche. But I think that a lot of our ideas and a lot of, you know, the things that we pull from to try to add features comes from our sellers and the people that we're talking to. And we're not trying to find like little problems that don't actually really matter. We're trying to get to the nitty gritty of what actually affects sellers as a whole in their business and their ability to grow their business. And that's where we kind of, I'd say, draw our ideas from to try to add to it. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. I guess recently, have you guys added any 
new features kind of like that you guys are like really excited about or like something customers have really been happy about recently or in the past year? This saturation score feature is I think one of the most recent ones. But also we've added a lot. It's just they are not necessarily about finding unique niches rather than now, looking at the history of every seller, every product, every niche. Uh, so, for example, one of the new features is product, uh, the product history, which demonstrates the price history of the product, the BSR history, and the sales history, which I think is a big insight into what was going on with the product. It's it's a one-year history, not from the first date, but I think that's enough to figure out the seasonality, what's going on in terms of the price, if the price has you know, seasonalities where, when a seller has to lower it, when the product went out of stock, what happened with the BSR and other things. So you can learn from the mistakes of the seller of other products and kind of create your own strategy to just improve things for yourself to start with the right price with the right amount of products in, in the first batch to focus the um, production t uh, terms you know the production length period well alexa were you gonna add something else? yeah i was just gonna add it's really nice we have the product history um and essentially the niche history as well where we're looking at the the niche overall as a whole, um, taking averages. And what's so great about the niche history is you're able to kind of, if, if you're taking time to learn about price wars and things like that and, and looking for certain indications, you can see them on the history right away and decide if, if this niche could be really saturated and look for certain indications and things like that. But again, it's just one of those things where sellers have always had access or people trying to sell have always had access to the different graphs, but it's always been you know, you're kind of flipping between the information. Maybe it's a 30 day or it's really hard to kind of compare and see the trends and where they interact with each other if you don't have it all together. And now it's all together in one place. So you're actually able to see the direct effects of a price drop on sales or um, if BSRs are dropping really low, prices are dropping really low, but no one's sales are really going up because maybe more people had entered the market, more sellers. So you're able to get a lot of information very quickly and you don't have to necessarily waste time doing kind of the side information that can just get you confused. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. So basically sum it up, it kind of gives you like a bird eye view of like what's going on within the market, what's going on within the product. And that gives you a little bit more of basically data to make a more educated decision instead of going completely exactly. blind in the dark. And then to kind of just wrap things up, um, Alexis and Valentina, you know, if there's like one thing that you like seem really common with like Amazon sellers and, and in terms of advice, you know, like, is there like something that you've like heard that's like a problem a lot? And then like, do you have any advice for that? Or is there any like last words of advice that you kind of want to share with our viewers here. Yeah, I'd say if there's any advice, it's to really analyze the data. Um, you know, numbers don't lie. And if you're able to track and get really accurate data, um, the other things will fall into place. Okay, yeah. So just follow the numbers, really, and follow, follow numbers, the data. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, it is uh -huh. opposing the uh, Alexis idea a little bit, but still, while relying on numbers, always remember about people and they have their needs, their pains, they, their, you know, tasks, jobs they, they, they need to be done. And uh, keep this in mind and generate value in your product, not only the product. Okay, and okay. talk about it. Mm -hmm. Talk to people, not to the computer, to your listing. Got it. All right. So basically what it comes down to is follow the data and then confirm the data by, you know, speaking with people, understanding why this product might be very useful in this life, uh, what are the use cases, and just really digging into more of that, who is your customer, and then when that product comes out, speaking their language. Did I get that right, guys? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, cool. And then, so Valentina, Alexis, you know, if people want to reach uh, reach out to you guys, you know, after this, what's the best way for people to like follow you guys and reach out to you guys? I think the best way is to go to our website, and there is a... A chat window where you can chat with our support team if you have any technical questions or questions about the prices or whatever we have to contact us you may ask the contact managers because 
uh -huh. <laughs> we are really close. We are all in, in, in the chat and working together. We have a Facebook group and we have a discount for uh, your followers, by the way. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, you know, I'll follow up with you guys, like, after this call, and we'll go ahead and get, like, the links and everything all sorted out in the bottom of this video. So by the time you guys, uh, the viewers, are watching this video, you guys will have access to all of that. But other than that, Valentina, Alexis, I want to thank you guys for your time and for, you know, the knowledge that you guys have brought to the Elite Solar Summit. I really do appreciate you guys coming on board and just trying to share your knowledge. Thanks for having us. Thanks a lot. Thanks all right, cool. I'll see you guys around, all right? Bye.